World Health Organization is now saying it's concerned China may be downplaying the severity of its COVID-19 outbreaks. We believe that the, the current numbers being, being published from, from China underrepresent the true impact of the disease. New reports in China and news reports there show hospitals crammed with patients. You can see that as the country grapples with some of the largest outbreaks it has seen so far in this pandemic. For a closer look at the concern, I'm joined now by Ben Cowling, head of epidemiology at the University of Hong Kong. Good to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. So on Wednesday, China reported a single death from COVID-19, so one, in Hong Kong to compare where the numbers are considered reliable. Officials reported 63 deaths on the same day. In fact, the seven-day average for deaths in Hong Kong is now six times higher than that of the U.S. Why are these outbreaks proving so deadly? Well, unfortunately, in China, they haven't had COVID for the, the past few years, of course. And so now COVID is allowed to spread. It's spreading very, very rapidly. And there's probably going to be a billion infections across China this winter. Most of those would be very mild. But unfortunately, the small fraction that are severe are overwhelming hospitals. And there's very little PCR testing being done in hospitals and in the community in China. And if you remember back two months ago, three months ago, entire cities were being tested by PCR every mm -hmm. single day. People had to go and get PCR tests all the time. Now there's almost no PCR testing being done. So that's why the numbers of, of, of deaths are so low. Why go from zero to 60? Why not sort of, you know, incrementally implement the testing and, and sort of do it on a gradual basis? Well, I, I completely agree with you. It, it, it's very strange that mm -hmm. China's gone from their containment measures, which were mostly working until, until recently, to just living with the virus and dropping all measures completely, rather than having a transition period over this winter with a mask mandate that would have helped, uh, school closures, perhaps, other social distancing measures, and, of course, still maintaining a lot of testing. Uh, it, it, it's very surprising that, that they've moved so quickly, as you said, from... It's, it's not from zero to 60, it's from, from 60 to zero. They, right. they've, uh, they've, they had a lot of measures and they've now got no measures. Yeah, and I think about, uh, I think about Ben, the, the Lunar New Year coming up and China planning on reopening its borders on Sunday. So what effect could these two factors have on this situation? Well, most likely the numbers of infections across China are already peaking at the moment. Mm. So when they have this mass migration across the country for the Lunar New Year, that will make sure the virus finds it, its way to every last corner of the country. But I, I would say nationwide, the peak is already occurring now. In terms of the global situation, the variants that are being detected in China are not new variants. They're, they're strains that have already been detected around the world in, in recent months. So I don't think there's a worry in that sense about what China might then spread what, what, what they might share with the rest of the world. But obviously, we have to keep a close eye on, on the strains that are circulating globally, including in China. Yeah, I want to ask you about that, because the variants you mentioned are not new variants. So we have seen those here in Canada, for example? That's correct. That's correct. So they have BA 5.2 and BF 7. Both those strains have been in Canada for some time already. The worrying strain at the moment for epidemiologists is XBB 0.1.5, which is being detected in the US. Um, mm -hmm. And, and th that's the one that I'm actually more concerned about. Are you more concerned because it's more contagious or because it has a more severe outcome? Uh, more concerned because it seems to be ha able to escape the immunity that people already have from, from maybe previous infections with other Omicron variants earlier, uh, maybe, maybe last year. So that, that's, that's the worry, that it can reinfect people. And so every time there's, there's a new strain like that, it tends to spread and cause a lot more infections. And in, in some people, that there will still be severe disease, unfortunately. That, that fracture is getting smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. but it, it still happens. Several countries, including Canada, have imposed this mandatory testing for travelers coming from China, and you say that is ineffective. If that's the case, what should the world do to respond? Well, I, I don't think we can hope to stop the international spread of new variants, whether it's whatever happens in China, maybe there will be a new strain, or XBB from 1.5 in the US. PCR testing of travelers will not stop the international spread of new variants. That's very clear. Uh, so I, I don't think that's actually necessary. It's costly, disruptive to travelers, annoying to travelers. Uh, I don't think it, it, it does any good. We do need to keep an eye on the virus. We can have testing of some arriving travelers for surveillance purposes. But uh, unfortunately, we're now living with the virus. We can't stop it from changing. We can just keep an eye on it and mm -hmm. manage the risk. Ben Cowling, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.